Hi, my name is Andy Sykes. I'm an award-winning animator and illustrator based in the UK. Welcome to my lessons on Flash CS5. This is my website, hextuber.com. You can check out my animation, my illustration, my interactive work, and also more of my video tutorials in Flash. Enjoy. Hi, and welcome to my video on Flash Professional CC, the new release of Flash that came out yesterday. I thought I'd just talk about some of the exciting new features that are contained within it. Most notably, it's been rewritten in 64-bit, which is great news for people like me. It means that Flash is going to be loads more resource efficient and faster and more responsive. So let's load it up and just see how fast it is. If I just click on it now, you can see it's going to take about two seconds to load up. And I get this very familiar Flash splash screen. But the user interface has changed a little bit. It's now dark to bring it in line with all of the rest of the Adobe suite, like after effects and photoshop they've all got this dark interface which is easier on your eyes if that bums you out don't worry you can just go to preferences and change it from dark back to light and you also have this option to enable shading so on little menus like this and in the different panels you'll have a gradient there so i'll leave that on i'm going to click ok so the first thing we're going to do is open a flash file that i made some time ago and you can see that Flash is telling me that it's in ActionScript 2 and that this is no longer supported in this version of Flash. This document doesn't have any ActionScript in it, but if yours does, you're going to have to convert all your code and components to ActionScript 3 in order for them to work in Flash Professional CC. So that's all this message is about. So I'm going to click OK. And we'll see that we've got our document here. It's running really nice and smoothly. This is a piece of experimental animation I did I was trying to make my own version of a kind of Street Fighter game. And what I'm going to demonstrate is the fact that you're now able to export full HD audio and video straight out of Flash with no lagging, which is fantastic. There's a new render engine that makes this all possible, and the fact that it's 64-bit makes it much, much quicker. So I'll show you how to do that. Just go to File, Export, and we've got this new option of Export Video. So if I click on that, it says that our stage is 1920 by 1080, which is great because that's 1080p. We've got convert video in Adobe Media Encoded ticked, which is exactly what we want. That'll make the whole process much quicker. And here we just choose where on our hard drive we want it. If you want, you can just export part of the animation by entering a time here. So it stops after this time has elapsed. I'm gonna leave it on when the last frame is reached. So I'm just gonna click export. And what I'll do first is it'll export the SWF and then it'll begin rendering that into a full uncompressed video, which it then sends to Adobe Media Encoder CC. So the video that Flash actually makes is massive. It's going to be at least a gigabyte and it'll send that to Adobe Media Encoder so that you can make it into anything you want at the best possible quality. So here we've got our movie and we can choose a preset to render it into. So you've got Blu-ray, you've got a QuickTime, you could have a P2 movie, which is uh, HD standard for uh, HD video cameras. You could have an MP3 of the audio or just a waveform. But I think I'm gonna choose H.264. So there we go. And all we need to do is press the Start Q item here. And you can see down here, we get a little preview of what our video is going to look like. So we just have to wait for that to finish rendering. There we go. So now that our video is rendered, we can check it out on our hard drive. You can see that it's here. This is the 1.4 gigabyte full uncompressed movie. And this is the H.264 one. So we can open that up. Plays really nicely in VLC or uh, QuickTime. You can see, there we go. It's playing through absolutely no lagging there at all, which is fantastic. And if you've got any action script within these animations, that'll come through as well. So that's a new feature. And also movie clips and nested movie clips will play when you export the video, which didn't used to be the case. So that also makes it loads easier. So if we just jump back to my little punk animation, we can take a look at the timeline and just see a couple of other new features. You're now able to select multiple layers and make them into a mask or make them into a guide. 
That didn't used to be possible. You had to do it on a layer by a layer basis, which would take a very long time. So that's very useful. But if we go to this punk here and we click on him, we can see that we're just in the middle of a little um, cycle where he's jumping. Let's find one where he's just moving his arms like this. This is a graphic symbol that's looping on the timeline. If I right click on it, we've now got the option to export a PNG sequence of just that graphic symbol looping. So if I click on that, so we just need to choose somewhere to save it. So I'll just make a little folder called punk. We could save it in there. And that's the width and height of that particular asset in my flash document, 72 DPI, which is a screen resolution. You can just click export. Then if we go into Finder, we can find a little punk folder. And you can see that we've got all of the frames of our animation there as transparent PNGs, which is incredibly useful. So that's another great new feature. And a feature that was introduced in CS6, but it's worth going over again, is this generate sprite sheet from Symbol, where you can create a sprite sheet for importing into games by right clicking on it here. So you can see this is our sprite sheet. It's got every frame of our animation in that graphic symbol. And we can just export that very easily. So let's just look at a couple of other new features. If I just start a new document, like so. So let's just grab the pen tool and show off a feature called real-time drawing. So if I just start making some points along the stroke, you can see that it starts showing me what my stroke is going to look like before I've completed it, which is really useful. It's a nice kind of simple feature. So there we go. And if we fill this with a gradient, for example, so if I grab this gradient, and I can fill in my shape with this gradient. I might just want to tweak that gradient a little bit so I could add some extra colors to it or I could change it from gray so that we can see a little bit better. There we go. And we can now change this gradient in real time as well. So if I get the gradient transform tool and just move the center point, we can see that it'll preview what that gradient looks like in real time, which is it's a really simple feature, but it didn't used to exist. And it's very, very useful. So there we go. There's a couple of features that aren't in Flash anymore. They're very minor ones, but they're the ones that I use occasionally. And so it's a bit of a shame. Uh, they've gotten rid of the FXG file format, which enables you to export vectors straight from Flash into Illustrator. Um, you can't copy and paste straight into Illustrator. You have to use this FXG format. And so if you're somebody like me who does all their drawing in Flash, but wants to keep it as vectors and then import it into Illustrator, you can't do that anymore. Uh, you'd have to use CS6 or one of the earlier versions to do that. And they've also gotten rid of TFL text, which was the new text engine that they introduced in CS5. So it's a bit of a U-turn to get rid of it at this stage. I know that some of the developers that I know found it irritating. If we just take a look at some of the examples I've got here. Uh, when you created TFL text in Flash and then exported an SWF, you get this SWZ file as well, or SWZ, which was irritating and you'd often get errors and it didn't tend to compile or work very well or even display in the way that you expected. So what they've done in Flash is they've just reverted back to classic text, which looks like this. If I open a file that had some TFL text in it, for example, so I'm just going to have a look at this page from my anti-revision book. You see we get this pop-up where it says this document contains TFL text, which is no longer supported, and that it's been converted to classic text. If we take a look at the document, the title is now very, very small, and we've got this text here, which is overlapping the main items. So I would have to go in and change all of that text again. And considering that it's a 100 page book, um, that's going to be quite a painful uh, process to do if I ever need to re-export stuff. Even if they weren't going to advance anymore, it'd be nice if it was backwards compatible. So perhaps they'll reintroduce support for those at some time in the future. So that's just a quick look at some of the new features in Flash CC. 
why not download it and check it out for yourself and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Hi, if you enjoyed this lesson, why not consider checking out the Hextuber Colouring and Activity book on my website, hextuber.com. It's suitable for kids and adults alike and you can get it from Amazon, Play.com and WH Smiths. Cheers.